Why is wisdom referred to as a woman, as a her, as a she? Well, there's a couple of different reasons for that, and I want to point to the scriptures to give us the answer. But before I do, I want to play something that I heard that th it's not a very good thought out answer. This is almost like someone's just inventing an answer, inventing an excuse. I'm not sure who this person is, but I saw this and I thought, wow, that's just not a very good understanding. That's not a very good breakdown of the text. And so I want to use that to springboard into what the answer is as to why wisdom is referred to as a her. I just wanted to see if you could explain why wisdom is referred to as her. You know, because wisdom is actually referred to as Jesus. Wisdom is not referred to as Jesus. Jesus is referred to or being being synonymous with wisdom, the wisdom of God. And so it's very important that we kind of keep this straight. And that's not that big of a deal. I wouldn't make too much of a point, a big deal off of this. But it's what he says later on that kind of says, eh, let's just find the truth instead of making things up. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, and this is where people get the Mother Earth thing, right? Well, gee, God is a woman. Actually, Jesus is very nurturing to us, like a woman. See, that's what a mother, I don't know if you have kids, right? You're a woman. You do anything for your kid. Understand what I'm saying? That's why he's referred to as the wisdom, aka her, because he's very nurturing. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, tells you that the wisdom and the power of God is Jesus Christ. He's very, very like loving, you know? But He's not a beta male, though. All right. So he's loving, but he knows like what to do. Right. OK. Jesus in no way is like a woman nurturing. There might be women who are more nurturing than men, but men too are nurturing. But more than the point, more to the point, God is the one who is a nurturer. But that's not why it's called a wisdom is called a her and that Jesus is like is, is wisdom like a her. No, you, you are missing the point. This person, I think his name is Johnny Chain or Chain. I'm not sure. Something like that. Anyway, let's go to the passage. Let's go to the passage in question, which is Proverbs 8. And let's read this. Does not wisdom call and understanding lift up her voice? Well, there it is. Does not wisdom call and understanding lift up her voice? On top of the heights beside the way where the path meets, she takes her stand. So why are we seeing these words like she and her. Notice, if I run over this to highlight, there is nothing to highlight over on the right side on the Hebrew. Why? Because when we look at the word wisdom, if you all just look at the very bottom, you'll see below me, this is a feminine noun. Now, when we say something in, uh, that's feminine, words in many, in many languages have gender. Uh, English, we have some words that, ha that have gender, but not like we see in Hebrew and Greek. Uh, our gender tend to refer to as an actual woman or male uh, like in our, in our language boy is masculine because it f refers to a male same thing with female however in hebrew or greek these words might be male or female but don't necessarily refer to a person's actual gender for example the word abba in hebrew is actually well, obviously refers to father but it, it actually is a feminine noun and we've got other verses in in greek other words in greek that might be feminine but aren't necessarily uh, for women. For example, harmatia is uh, a feminine noun, but it's not for, it doesn't refer to women, it's just feminine. And so this particular word here in Hebrew, this word kokam, uh, kakam is a feminine noun. Doesn't mean that wisdom is a woman. And so the likelihood, one of the, one of the rationalizations, one of the explanations is that, and it's probably true from what I've read, that earlier Hebrew Jews did not see this as her at all, but you would use this, this her, because again, this is poetry. And so someone might think, well, it's okay to even refer to it or translate this as her because the word, the, the word that is the antecedent of the word is, is a wisdom, which is a feminine noun. And so just to kind of be poetic or remain poetic, you might see her or she brought up, but is wisdom, it's a, this a figure of speech, is wisdom an actual person? No. Now, where do we get this from? Let's just kind of go back to Proverbs 7. And I understand that Proverbs are not necessarily written in context, but let's not forget that Proverbs 8 does literally come after Proverbs 7. What is he saying in Proverbs 7? Well, this letter is written or this proverb is written to this man, to this son. And he says, my son in chapter in Proverbs 7, 1, my son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live and my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bring them on your fingers. And so he's trying to speak to this person um, about what they should do. 
say to wisdom, you are my sister. Now, the reason why he's using this 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 feminine uh, this this use of the word in a in a feminine sense because he's going to compare wisdom with something that is unwise that a lot of males get themselves in trouble with. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your intimate friend. Words that you can kind of understand. We we use anthropomorphic words. Uh, God does to communicate, and so here you have uh, this writer giving these. This is something anyone could really understand. Now, again, this is still poetry, but it's not. It's it's not even. Uh, you could understand this if it's, if this even weren't poetry. You can you, you can say something that's not poetry. It's not the genre of poetry, but say something poetic that they may keep you from an adulteress, from the foreigner who flatters with her words. For at the window of my house, I looked out through my lattice and I saw among the naive and discerned among the youth a young man lacking sense. What's the opposite of lacking sense? Wisdom. Passing through the street near her corner and he takes the way up to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the middle of the night and in the darkness. So what's his point? The, the writer's point is that this uh, naive person without discernment, without wisdom, can be lured by this woman, by this adulteress. And so the opposite of a person being lured by this adulteress, this woman, is another woman. Wisdom. Literally not an actual woman, but use wisdom to keep you from falling into these particular traps. And behold, a woman comes to meet him dressed as a harlot and cunning of heart. She is boisterous and rebellious. Her feet do not remain at home. She is now in the streets, now in the squares and lurks by every corner. So she seizes him and kisses him. And with brazen face, she says to him, I was due to offer peace offer. Today I have paid my vows. Therefore, I have come to you out to meet you to seek your presence earnestly. And I have found you. I have spread my couch with coverings with colored linens of Egypt. By the way, notice some of the things he's bringing up is that this is also things that happen to the nation of Israel or even to us as Gentiles. You put something before us that can kind of lure you away and play the part of the harlot, play the part of the adulteress because you go after this other adulterous woman, which was the problem with Israel. But use wisdom. Wisdom will keep you away. Don't matter how good it sounds, how beautiful he or she looks or anything like that use wisdom so then when we get to chapter when we get to proverbs 8 we can understand does not wisdom call because we were just speaking about wisdom in proverbs 7 does wisdom not call and, and understanding lift up her voice on top of the high so what should you listen to if the, and so you put us in the place of two women the example of, of the analogy of two women one is a seductress one is an adulterer one is wisdom which one should you go off so you understand why this is used that way and going back to to 1 Corinthians uh, 1. Uh, let's go back a little bit further. Verse 20. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased. So he's using play on words of wisdom. Our wisdom, the world's wisdom, um, leads us nowhere. As a matter of fact, our wisdom is foolishness compared to God. For indeed, Jews ask for a sign and Greeks search for wisdom. Who is Paul writing to? Paul is writing to not Jews, but to Gentile believers. He says, so you you, you Gentiles, you Greeks, what do you, you seek for? You seek for wisdom. In that day, the, the kind of prevailing thought, the want, the people were to be more wise. They wanted to be more deep or philosophical. They wanted to be profound and they looked for wisdom. That's why he says that to the Jews, this Christ uh, is a stumbling stone. It's a rock of offense to the Gentiles. Doesn't make much sense. It's confusion. It's not wise. And so that's why he's bringing this up. He says, for indeed, the Jews seek for a sign and Greeks search for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to Jews, a stumbling block to Gentiles. It's foolishness. But to those who are called both Jew and Greeks, Christ is the power of God. And he is also the wisdom of God. Why? Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And so he's using this word uh, wisdom to point out that cr everything about wisdom is embodied in Christ. Doesn't mean that Christ equals wisdom, wisdom equals Christ. No, but he's using that to kind of make the point. The point is you, you're looking for something, some sort of wisdom of this age. That's Christ. As a matter of fact, he's been the wisdom of all ages. 
and he's not to be uh, made synonymous with a female, with a woman, with a her. That was just used poetically in Proverbs because what was the writer of Proverbs 7 and 8 speaking about? Not being lured away, but to use wisdom. And he uses two different women as an example. One who's categorized as being wise that you should go after. And the other one that's categorized as being a harlot, being an adulteress. And so that's the reason for it. It is a poetic way of speaking. It's not intended to be taken literal as though wisdom is feminine. Again, the noun that's used there, the Hebrew noun that's used there is a feminine noun. As a matter of fact, even the Greek version of Sophia, that's also a feminine noun, but it doesn't mean that it's actually feminine in the sense that it's naturally, biologically feminine. 